We just hook him through the nostrils like that, and he's yours, man. Oh, here we go. Yep, hit one. I'm hit. I'm hit. Oh, yep. It's definitely a kingfish. That is pulling hard. Welcome to Jetfish. My name's Kirk Davis, and this is my show where I take you to meet some pretty cool people in some pretty cool places and have some pretty cool fishing experiences. And I do it all on a wave runner. With a range of over 150 kilometres, I can go anywhere that a boat can go. It's easy to launch, safe and stable enough to stand on one side or fight large fish. I've got all the electronics and storage that any boat would have, and I always carry with me the latest safety equipment. This life's not going to live itself. So hop on now, and let's head off on today's Jetfish Adventure. Today I'm in Fitianga on the eastern side of the Coromandel and I'm meeting here 12 other ski fishers. These guys are all Yamaha employees, they're dealers. They're the dealers who have done the best for the year. We've taken a whole lot of dealers from Australia, a whole lot of dealers from New Zealand and we're having a Bledders Low Cup type fishing competition. These guys are amped. A lot of them are not very experienced fishers, so they haven't done a lot of fishing from a ski particularly. So today's show is all about Jet Ski Fishing 101. We're going to be looking at how to fish from a ski, the little things we've got on the ski to make fishing from a ski easier, and we're going to try and get these guys into a nice, some nice fish. All the Aussies are talking it up last night against the Kiwis, the Kiwis are giving it back. I've been drawn to lead the Aussie team today, so I am an honorary Aussie. I'm not sure how I feel about that just yet, but it's all about the fishing, it's all about the jet ski fishing. So let's get on the jet fish ski now, head on out, see what we can catch. We've got a couple of minutes before we head out fishing for the day, so I thought we'll quickly go through where I put all my items on the ski. There's a huge amount of storage on the Wave Runner and a lot of room for some tackle. So let's have a little look now, and you guys will be amazed at what you can store on it. The main area where I keep all my tackle is this front glove box or centre console. It is a massive, massive area in the 2019 Wave Runner. It's pretty much like a wizard's sleeve. To start with, I keep a tackle box. It's a double-sided ocean angler tackle box. What that allows me to do is I've got a whole lot of bottom ship jigs in here. So the, the Daiwa Pirates and uh, the sliders, as well as on the other side, some knife jigs. I've got some jig heads. I've got uh, sinkers. I've got swivels. I've got live bait hooks. I've got everything I need for my tackle for an average day's fishing. This is probably 90% of what I need. Anything else I need, I've got a big tackle bag in the front, which we'll look at in a minute. In addition to that, there's all sorts of other stuff I can store in here. I've got all my soft baits in here. I've got my bottom jigs. I've got line fluorocarbon. I've got some 20 pound fluorocarbon there. I've got some 80 pound fluorocarbon. I've got some spare 20 pound fluorocarbon. I've got riding gloves. Pretty much, you name it, I've got it in there. It's actually such a large space that it can be hard to find some of the smaller items. For anything else I need, there's this large front storage locker. Heap of space in here, and I keep a massive tackle bag in there. You can see the size of this. Pretty much anything I ever need is in here. The forecast for the day was a little windy, but the boys were all amping to get some lures in the water. The night before I gave them all a comprehensive briefing about safety on the ski, how to fish from a ski, and the types of species we may encounter. Our first target for the day was to catch some live bait, so off we went. The Kiwi team were at the live bait spot, but my Aussie boys were nowhere to be seen. Here we go, dropping down into it. Fish on! Right, let's go find those Aussie boys, see how they're getting on, maybe give them a little bit of advice on slow trolling liveys. Okay, so what we want to do is, once I put this livey on for you, you want to just click it into gear, 
and just go that way along the edge of the reef at about two knots. It'll just, just the normal idle speed in gear, that's all you need. And just feel it. Just go by feel, see how you go. Right, I'll hook them on for you. To hook them on, we just hook them through the, through the nostrils. We just hook them through the nostrils like that, and he's yours, man. He's away. That is now Kingfish Lunch. <laughs> Kingfish Lunch! Come on! I'll get one out as well, eh? I'll cruise along beside you. We'll get a real good workup going. Oh, here we go. Yep, hit one, I'm hit, I'm hit. Big car why, man. Hooked up on a nice big car why. Jesus, that's a big, big car why. Geez, that's a pig of a car, why? So there we have, straight away, a monster kahawai. It's probably pushing almost three kilos. He's a fat one. Look at the size of him. Two and a half kilos. We've got a heaviest other category. So we're gonna put him on ice, and we'll weigh him in later. Hey, kingy, 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 kingy. Here, yeah, fishy, fishy. With the kahawai on the board for Team Australia, I continued trolling a fresh jack mackerel live bait for something bigger. Oh, yep. Angry. Nice fish. Okay, I'm on to a nice one. This feels a bit more solid. On to something nice here. Pulled some good line, a big angry head shake when it grabbed it. Don't think it's a kawai, think it's a kingfish. We are on. It's definitely a kingfish. That is pulling hard. It's going for the deep, I'm only in 14 meters of water. Okay, I'm gonna shut the ski off. Get rid of a bit of noise for him. Is what we spent the time getting those liveys for, showing the boys how to catch liveys, how to rig the baits. Okay, got to try and get some line now. I'm over quite a bit of reef. See him at about 10 meters on the sounder. Oh, big head shakes, big kingfish head shakes. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. I've only got mid-range tackle, I'm using 50 pound uh, main line. So I can't really can't lock right up on him. The Saltus 35 has got the ability to handle bigger tackle than that. But I'm running 50, got to keep it sporting. And he must be getting close now. Plenty of go, had him to the top, and he's gone again. This thing, it's got more energy than your nana. Come on, 
Here he comes. Round you come. Yeah, it's a nice specimen. It's tied out now. Ratchet on in the holder. That's step one. Step two, you can either grab his tail or you can grab him in the mouth. I'm going to try and grab him in the mouth to start with. We'll see how tired he is, how angry he is when I grab him. He doesn't look like he's going to like that, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. I'm going to keep him so I can put my hand in his gills. And we've got him. Woo! How's that? Team Australia's on the board. It almost pains me to say it. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast into where the water's breaking over these rocks. It comes out of about 12 meters, so there's plenty of white water, plenty of food, plenty of bait around. Let's see if there's plenty of snap. Fish on here. Just working a little soft bait. Soft bait between live baits. I think I've hooked onto a car Y. Let's get him in. To land a fish on a ski is not as easy as it sounds. A lot of rods get broken. To get a fish close to the ski, there's no point lifting your rod. You see when I lift the rod like that, the fish is getting no closer and we're just putting the rod at risk of breaking. So when you're ready to land the fish, he's on the top now, he's nice and subdued. Have the net ready. I've got the net and I push the rod backwards towards the side of the ski and I can just reach in and get him. That's how you land a fish without snapping your rod on the ski. Coming up, the wind dies down. Yes! So we head out wide in search of adventure. This week on Jetfish, I'm fishing in the beautiful Fitianga with a group of New Zealand and Australian wave runner dealers in a trans-Tasman jet ski fishing competition. Here we go. Fish on. Feels like a snapper I cast into that rock. It's not a monster snapper but it might be one to weigh for the comp. Oh, what's that following it? Kingfish. Kingfish following it. Ooh, let's get him in. Let's get him in. He's in the net. Beautiful. So there we go on the board with about a 40 centimetre snapper. Nice one. Here we go, fish on. Feels like a snapper I cast into those rocks again. Took it right up high. It's only a couple of metres below the surface, this one. And that's a nice fish. Not a monster, but a nice eater. Right, let's get him in. Beautiful. A nice reefy snapper. We'll have a look at this one and we'll have a look at his dark colours. Let's have a quick look at him. Get that bruised banana out of him. I'm going to keep him so I can put my hands in his gills. And there he is. A nice reefy snapper around the just over the 40 centimetre mark. Just getting his dark colourings. Nice blue spots. Beautiful fish. After a windy day's fishing, my Australian team have some nice fish weighed in for the Trans-Tasman Jet Ski Fishing Competition. With the conditions far more favourable than yesterday, it's a great day for an adventure out wide.
After a fun ride out of around 15 nautical miles, we arrived at my secret spot to find the other team already here. With no time to waste, we got into the fishing and Joe hooked up straight away. Aussie Joe was into a nice kingfish and he was excited. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! Not good. Yes! <laughs> Woo! Well, that's a king! Nice, Joe. This was a great start for our team, but Joe wasn't done yet. Joe looks like he's hooked up to a nice one. I'm just drifting along behind him, trying to get a hook up. We really need another one. I think the Kiwi team have got a couple, but there's going to be an inquiry over them. So hopefully, I'll hook up shortly. But I think what's happening is, as Joe's drifting away from me, the school of Kingies is going with them, so they're getting further away from my bait. So what I might do is just try and get a little bit closer to them. This fish was a lot bigger than the last one, and as Joe had lost his net, the boys on the boat helped him land it. We got Woo! it! How'd you go, Joe? Mate, I'm loving it. Surely now it's my turn to hook up. Here we go, I'm hooked up to a nice one. Oi! There's a nice fish, I've got the drag almost on the stop of the Saltus 35. And it's still pulling string. Here we go, starting to get some line on them now. Yeah, Joey! This is a nice fish. This thing's digging down, man. Digging down deep. I'm up to about, he's up to about 25 meters now. So I'm gonna back the drag off just a couple of touches. Just to go a little easier on the gear. Right, here he comes, let's get him in. He's pretty tired, so I'm gonna get him alongside to land a kingfish like this. Once he's tired, once you pop his head out, he should just calm down a little bit. His head's just on the top of the water there. I can see he's hooked in the corner of the mouth. So now it's just all about being gentle with him. I'm gonna put the ratchet on, reels and free spool. That allows me to put it in the holder. And then come around here like this and just try and grab his tail. It's a little bit tricky, but it can be done, hopefully. And there it is. Yeah, boy. And that is a nice size Coromandel kingfish. How's that for a nice Coromandel kingfish? The time has run out in this comp, so we're going to put him in the icy tech and whip back now to get back in time for weigh-in. We've got a couple of kings, so hopefully that's enough for the team. This is certainly a nice specimen. So we'll go back, see how we go at prize giving. I'm just
just pulling up to a little cave on the Mercury Islands of the Coromandel, taking our visitors in there. And man, this is a cool little spot. Check this out. Hey, boys. The adventure's done for the day, it was time to head into prize giving. I saw more New Zealand than you did. What happened? You missed the turn. I thought you might have. Yes. Yeah, you said don't throw tickets in. Oh, you ended up on the other side. You ended up on the other side. Other side of what? Around the bend. New Zealand. Around that. Boy. You just find there. Where did you end up? I'll check the GPS. You jump off, I'm going to see where you went. Use the ass off me. And you know that that's a shout, eh? That's a six o'clock shout. Where'd you go? I While we were exploring the caves, Aussie Dave had headed off towards what he thought was home. He went in the wrong direction and could have landed himself in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> Port Charles! He went to Port Charles. We're just filling up the ski of Dave, who's just got back. And he said he's run out of gas because he had no idea where he went. I've just checked this GPS. And bear in mind we're in Fitianga. He's been to Port Charles, which is at the very top almost of this Coromandel Peninsula, miles and miles away. So he's had a good day. He's done a bit of sightseeing. We did a bit of sightseeing as well today, but he's definitely got his money's worth. Goodness me. Did you find him out there, bro? He was just out there in the channel. He ran out of fuel and came off the ski. He fell off? Yeah, couldn't get back on. <laughs> it'd be the boat helped him. It's pretty out of breath when I got there. How did he come off the ski? I don't know. Was he wearing a PLB? No. Nope. Where are the PLBs that everybody got? They just stored them in their glove box. No. So that is a real good safety exercise right there. Dave ran out of gas and then somehow he's fallen off his ski and being a bigger boy, he couldn't get back on. Everybody's got a PLB, everybody's got a radio and everybody's got a mobile phone, but he didn't have that with him. It's gotta be attached to you. If you don't have your PLB attached to you or your radio attached to you, you're achieving nothing. If you come off your ski, you're in trouble. So always, keep your emergency equipment, at least two of them. Leave your phone somewhere dry, but these two items, leave them on you. So if you find yourself in the water like Dave did, no idea how he found himself in the water, but if you find yourself in the water like Dave did, you can get help.